is the only thing to do is unscrew Hello folks, Reginald Scott here. Welcome to the video and I do hope that you like, comment, share and subscribe today. Uh, if you are a new or returning viewer, it's great to see you and I hope you enjoy the video and find it useful. So today I'm going to be showing you how to make one of these things, which is a basically a small mobile air compressor that you can make at home and is really useful for lots of jobs around the workshop, whether you've got a small home workshop, a small business like myself, or even a mobile business like a, a bike mechanic from a van kind of thing, you can use one of these things to great effect. Um, so what it uses basically is a couple of parts that you can buy from most hardware stores, and the rest is just stuff that you can pick up almost for free. Um, in this case, I'm using four cylinders, uh, pop bottles or fizzy drinks bottles. These I pick up at various different parties and family events where people drink fizzy drinks, I don't personally, but um, my family members do, so I just gr grab these basically for free um, and use them to make my air compressor. Uh, this thing here is the gun side of it, and this you can buy at, like I say, a local hardware store. I used to have a plastic one, but that one broke after a year of use, so I've switched to a metal one now. These connectors you can also pick up from your local hardware store. They're, they're standard air compressor connectors. You'll also need these things, which are Jubilee clips which are used to connect the hose. Uh, you can also buy this from your local hardware store. It's just a small diameter, a high pressure pipe. This one's got a braided lining on it, um, but it's just, you know, high pressure hose basically. And uh, it's very cheap. And then what else you will need is uh, these things, which are tubeless tire valves for cars. You can pick these up at garages or car shops. I bought some really expensive ones initially. These are um, Continental branded ones and they were really expensive. But then while I was rummaging around in a cheapo store, I found these ones, which are not quite as pretty, but um, a lot cheaper. So you don't have to spend big money on these things. Uh, there you go. So as you can see, the, uh, the Continental ones are much cleaner. <laughs> anyway. You'll need those for the ends of your connections uh, going into the bottles and one of them you'll need a valve core in as well. The valve cores can be removed for the rest. This one, as you can see, is removed. In order to remove the valve cores, all you need is a small screwdriver. If you don't have a valve core removing tool, uh, I just use a very thin bladed screwdriver like this. There we are. So just insert the screwdriver down the side and if you give it a little turn, it should come out. But once you get it moving, you can unscrew it. There you are, there's the valve core removed. So you'll only need one of these if you, um, you're you building this unit, you only need one valve core because all the rest can be open. In fact, if you don't open the valve cores, it won't work properly because you'll trap the air inside the system. So you can stack up these bottles as many as you want. I used to have four sets of these bottles, uh, but now I only have two, as you can see. And um, it depends how much air you want. Two bottles like this is normally enough to service one bike. Um, so to, to sort of blow out the dirt and the, uh, the oils and stuff from various different bearings. I actually use it after I've washed the bearing to blow out the, um, the degreases that I use. But you can basically stack this system up as many times as you want, as you can see. Um, you just join them by pieces of the, um, the high pressure hose with more of these, more of the Jubilee clips. So you can basically stack them up as many as you want. Um, the pressures that you can get into these bottles, now these are actually are pumped to 100 PSI. Um, I can get these pumped up to 115 around about there before they fail. Um, and when they fail, they do fail quite spectacularly in a loud bang. And I'm going to demonstrate that later in this video. Uh, but I generally only pump them to around 91 or 92. 
simply for safety reasons, okay? So I don't want them exploding on me. But what just sort of happens over time is the, the bottles, when you pop them up, they get fatigued and uh, they end up wearing out after a while and then cracks appear and they end up exploding. So that's why I've only got two right now. I used to have four, but um, one of them did explode and I removed another one because I could see the fatigue lines. And then I just ended up adding two new bottles. So let me demonstrate how this thing works. Basically, you pump these things up and then you've got the, uh, the compressed air stored in here. And then you can spin things. Like Like that absolutely fantastic it's um really good so that's enough to do one bite so now let me show you the process of uh, making this thing and let me show you how I make one of those bottles now because I have some extra pot bottles what I'm going to do is I'm going to make two more okay single-ended uh systems simple if you just want to make an open system you can just put another hole in the bottom and stick another valve in but i'm just going to show you how to make the one in the top and then what i'm going to do is take these outside and pressurize them beyond their limit with this one it's just going to be a standard bottle normal with this one i'm going to wrap the bottle in electrical tape to try and prevent an explosion happening or make them safer when the explosion does eventually happen. And I'm also going to do it with a normal water bottle. Okay, so this is a much lighter material, just in case anyone out there is asking the question, why don't you just use a normal bottle? It's kind of essential to use proper um, pot bottles because these are designed for taking much higher pressures than a water bottle. But I wanna see how much pressure we can get in a water bottle before it explodes. And then that will give you an idea if you do decide to indeed use standard water bottles, which I mean, holding it now, it feels a lot lighter than a uh, pot bottle. So here again, um, why did I decide to make one of these things rather than buy one? Uh, as I say, number one is the price. Number two is the convenience. The, uh, the, the full size ones or the proper compressors um, require an electrical outlet to use and they're quite heavy and they're very, very noisy and also they're quite dangerous they can explode um, over the years you see inside these bottles there's actually condensation uh, building up inside the bottle that condensation causes those metal tanks that the real compressors have to become rusted and over time they weaken and sometimes they fail and when they do fail they can kill you you know they, they spread shards of uh, sharp metal left right and center and uh, those can basically just rip you to pieces um, whereas if these things explode they do explode with a very loud noise and they do spread a lot of water vapor and dust everywhere but they're not deadly the fragments that come from these plastic bottles are not going to penetrate your skin um, or cause any serious harm. So it's much safer. Plus the fact I can fit these tiny bottles right behind my solid wooden desk. And even if they were to explode, I wouldn't be anywhere near the blast. Um, so that's absolutely fine. Generally, I charge this system while I'm out the room as well. Now, how do you charge the system? So there are two ways of doing it. Let me demonstrate. So one way to charge the system is with a regular bicycle pump. And you can pump this thing up to 100 PSI in exactly, uh, for this pump, in exactly 70 pumps. Okay, so I just counted earlier when I charged the system. And it took me 70 repetitions of this pump to get the bottles up to 100 PSI. Um, as I say, generally I don't pump to 100, I only pump to like 91, 92, uh, just for safety. I know these are good for 115 PSI, generally speaking, but I don't want to test them to that limit. So I just take them up to, uh, generally I just take them up to 92. Uh, but the way I actually prefer to charge my cylinders nowadays is with one of these, which is an electronic bicycle pump uh, that I bought off AliExpress. This thing was, I think about 50 or $60 uh, Bruneian, so less than 50 or $60 US. Um, and it's fantastic. It's designed for all sorts of uh, different applications at home 
or at work. Um, and you can connect this thing up and just pump your bottles up. So once you've got the thing on, you just thread it into your bottle like this. It comes with a variety of connectors. This one is for Schrader valves. Um, I'm using all Schrader on this system. And once it's on, it tells me how many PSI is left in the bottle. There's only 12 PSI right now. And this is what I'm pumping it to, which is 91. So off it goes. Already got 13 PSI in there. So what I do is I tend to um, hook this thing up during my lunch break or in the morning when I'm opening up shop, set it running, and then I can charge my bottles while I'm eating my lunch or while I'm getting the shop open. Um, there we go. So one thing I didn't mention about the electronic pump is you can actually keep pumping while you're working and it will replenish the air in the system as you go. Uh, obviously you're going to be using air faster than the, the little pump can replace it, but it just means you've got a bit more buffer um, and you're less likely to completely run out of air partway through a job. And then as soon as you stop using the, the compressed air, the little pump is going to uh, top up the system and replace what you've used. So that's a really good way of using it. And it's a lot quieter than using um, a, a real air compressor. And of course, unless of course you buy um, one of the expensive quiet air compressors, none of them are really silent, but you know, the one of the quieter ones. Um, but the, uh, the electronic one is pretty quiet. So here we go. So what you do, take the lid, find roughly where the center is and uh, pop a little pilot hole in it. I think this one's only a two mil bit. Uh, yeah, two mil. So it doesn't matter what size you use, you can use whatever you have. There we go, stick a little hole in it. And then that's gonna go back on top of the bottle. And that's gonna be our rough center. Next, we're going to need a bigger drill bit. And you just work your way up basically using these uh, larger drill bits. These ones are pretty rubbish and pretty blunt, however. There you go, that's gone through. And I'm going to work my way up until I get to uh, 10. Because that is the biggest drill that my small, sort of biggest bit that my small drill will actually hold. Uh, 10 is also a decent size for the tubeless valves. Be careful of your hands are good. That one's a lot sharper. Um, I should be using gloves, so I will do that. There we are. Safety first. Get some gloves on. There we go. So now I can hold the bottle, and if I miss, I'm not going to impale my hand. So that one went through like a hot knife through butter. That was good. I think I'm going to keep that drill bit for the next one. Uh, Small one there. Right, where are we at now? Okay, number 10. So this is the biggest drill bit you're gonna need. And it's the biggest drill bit that fits in my chuck. Right. Okay, super. So what you're left with is a hole. It's a little bit rough, as you can see, and we're gonna have to clean that up. So in order to clean that hole up, a little crafting knife with a hook on it is also pretty good for that. Um, just get it in there and just clean around the hole. Obviously, the, uh, the smoother you can get the hole, the better. Okay, something like that. Now, 
You obviously want to do the same thing for the bottom if you're going to be making this bottle as part of your, your sequence of bottles. Um, and again, you just drill through this section here. It's a little bit more difficult because it's harder than the, uh, the cap at the top. This is the hardest part of the bottle. Um, and then when you're inserting the valve, it's really easy to do, of course, for this side, because this side is just a lid. So you can just take this off and stick one of your, uh, your valves in. As you can see, the 10 mil bit is just the same size as the, the starting point of this rubber valve, or the rubber side of the valve. So as you push it through, it gets really nicely locked in there and forms a really good air seal. You don't even need to use any putty or any sealant or anything like that. It seals itself really well uh, into there. And that goes in on the top. If you are putting a valve in the bottom of the container, simply use a piece of threaded rod or a coat hanger, um, something that you can get uh, your, sorry, your valve on like this and then you can just insert it into the bottle like that all the way through and poke it through the hole and pull it out the back okay this bottle's got water in it so there you go that is pretty much how you make them once you've got this end on you can put on your jubilee clip onto your piece of pipe stick your hose over the end and just basically screw it on Um, if it's difficult to do this, just get some boiling water and pour boiling water over the end of the pipe and it will soften the pipe up and then you can thread it in more easily. Look how easily this is going in there and it threads on absolutely beautifully, forms a really nice seal. So thread it all the way on. Okay, then slide your Jubilee clip over the end to that threaded section and uh, oh, that's weird I appear to be bleeding um, and then you can tighten up the nut okay so once you've tightened up the nut then that forms a perfect seal there and that's not going anywhere then you can connect this side to the rear of another bottle and then you end up with your sequence of bottles um, and as I say I in the past I've had up to four in a sequence but there's really no limit to how many um, you can put in there. If you want to test whether the bottles are sealed properly and you don't have any leaks, you can put a little bit of soapy water inside the bottles and then pressurize the bottles and then move the bottles around. And if you see any bubbles appearing or soapy water spurting out any of the gaps, that's where you have to go back and uh, check uh, that you've made a nice round hole or that you haven't missed anything. Right, there you go. Now I'm going to unscrew this now because this is going to be our test bottle number one. So I have pre-charged the bottles. Uh, this one and this one have been pre-charged to 100 PSI. And this one has been pre-charged to only 60 PSI. And you can see the bottom of the bottle is already bulging out. Look, because this is a much lighter material. It's the same material, but it's much lighter construction. So I don't think this is going to last much longer. It might only last up to like 70 PSI and then explode. But we shall see. Safety first, gloves, face shield, and I'll also be stuffing something in my ears to uh, prevent hearing damage because I cannot find my ear protection anywhere. You know what it's like, you, uh, you put it somewhere safe and then you can never find it. So I'll be stuffing foam in my ears. Okay, first up for test is the standard Coca-Cola bottle. Uh, it's showing 85 right now and I've set it to 150 PSI so it should definitely fail before then. Alright, let's get going, see how we do. Put it inside my teeth. Okay. 
from us and the pump has given up maximum my pump will come to 150 psi. Great. <laughs> Thank you. This is a pressurized bomb. Guess the only thing to do is unscrew. itself didn't fail although it's become very malleable that feels really strange now plastic has changed in its consistency it feels much softer more malleable than it was before uh, but where it failed was the um, the valve popped out top so 150 psi you can get into these things i i had no idea they um, they could go that high I saw another experiment on YouTube and they were failing at 115. So it must be the brand of bottle. That guy was using like seven up bottles or something. And these were, these are Coca-Cola bottles. So I guess these are rated much higher, but I, I suppose you'd have to do your own testing to find that out. Um, that is impressive. I did not expect that to, uh, to last to 150 PSI. Wow. That was actually getting pretty scary. But as you can see, when it failed, no shrapnel. Now, eventually, after years of fatigue, these things do fail. Uh, but when they do fail, they rip apart, but um, again, no deadly shrapnel. So that's why I tend to use this system rather than, um, you know, a proper compressor. It just ends up being that little bit safer. Scary though, it was still scary, but uh, yeah, <laughs> interesting. Uh, the actual the water bottle lost pressure already, unfortunately. This one, it didn't hold its pressure, so I'm going to do that one next. This one's going to fail next year. It's only 31 to fire right now. This one is leaking, just doesn't hold the pressure. Right, there you go. I wouldn't advise using water bottles, they simply aren't designed for holding high pressure. Now, my other issue is that because this thing, this pump here, can only pump to a maximum of 150, there is no way that we're going to be able to pump up this bottle any higher and we already know that this valve here will fail at 150 so there's really no point in um, pumping this one up to just release the pressure Have 
obviously lost some pressure while sitting out here. So there you go. Homemade air compressor, pretty safe. Uh, a little bit scary, but pretty safe. <laughs> So there you have it folks, that is how you make your own homemade air compressor. I will be probably taping up my other two bottles like this one as well. I know that the uh, the failure point was here to, in today's video, but like I say, after fatigue, after using these bottles repeatedly, they do tend to crack around the base as well and rip apart. So I do think that some duct tape like this is going to uh, prevent any shrapnel um, and make them even safer. And I will try to remember to leave the link uh, in the description to where I bought this thing from on AliExpress if you want to get them. Like I say, I think they're around 50, 60 Brunei dollars, not too expensive. Um, certainly a lot cheaper than a real air compressor and a lot more mobile as well. So thanks for watching and as always, whatever bike you're riding, I hope you stay safe. Bye.